Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. If you would take a moment and fill out that QR code and make sure you include everybody that's watching this morning, we would certainly appreciate that. Remember, we do attract or we do track that attendance, so we want to keep that up to date. And then also, if you're at home and not feeling well, we pray that you certainly get back to feeling well and joining us here in worship. Or if you are an online, regular online attender, welcome back. And if you're joining us for the first time, hey, feel free to reach out to us if there's any way we can help you. Let's get going with our opening song. We continue with Martin Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have turned away from each other in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. Have mercy on us, kind Father, because of the obedience of our brother, Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us all that is past and with the power of the Holy Spirit, move us to serve you faithfully. Set our feet upon a new path of life, and build your kingdom here among us. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Old Testament reading for the third Sunday of Pen after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 3. 
They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapters 4 and 5. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and... By the prince of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemes they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is, guilt, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and brothers came standing outside. They sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he said to them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
to you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So the title of my sermon this week is, A Thing is a Thing is a Thing. And now I'm not talking about thing one and thing two, uh, <laughs> like Dr. Seuss for sure. We're trying to get after truth today. You know, if it's got four legs and a tail and it barks, it's probably not a cat. <laughs> it's a dog. So I googled it. A thing is a thing. A thing remains what it is as a truth, not what is said of that thing, regardless of what anyone says about it. In other words, a truth about something is not defined by what others say of it, as their expression is subject to their perception, prejudices, and individual opinions. So that's 2015 from uh, Cora.com. <laughs> Boy, with all the craziness going on in the world today, this definition certainly nails it, right? It seems perception and prejudices and opinions are the new truths. But then again, how can this possibly be so? It really does. It. I mean, if it's got four legs and a tail and it barks, it's got to be a dog. <laughs> then again, we find this in our confusing family dynamic text from St. Mark's Gospel today. Mark tells us the story of Jesus' mother's and brothers being a little bit confused by what he is doing and what he is doing with his teaching. In fact, his mother and his brothers thinks that he have completely lost his mind. And the Pharisees think that Jesus is demon-possessed. But Jesus uses pretty good logic to dispel their thinking, right? If Satan is divided against his own self, I mean, how can his kingdom stand? Uh, and so it makes a little sense there. Now, this doesn't surprise me, and probably doesn't surprise you either, right? Because he is, after all, true God. But then again, Jesus calls his followers, his listeners, his doers, <laughs> doers of the word, his mother and his brothers and his sisters. So is Jesus trying to confuse us about the truth this morning? <laughs> There certainly is a lot of confusing things going on in the text, perhaps. But let's get back to the truth. While truth seems like it should be black and white, there's a lot of challenges to that notion today. Even before the pandemic, we have been on an interesting path. Take, for instance, the article entitled, The Difference Between Speaking Your Truth and the Truth by Connor Friedersdorf in the Atlantic on January 8, 2018. He writes, on Monday, as Oprah Winfrey's stirring acceptance speech at the Golden Globes secured a place in the national conversation, Byron Tao of the Wall Street Journal tweeted this, Oprah employed a phrase that I've noticed a lot of other celebrities using these days, your truth, instead of the truth. Why that phrasing? He fretted that your truth undermines the idea of shared common facts. And so the battle ensues. Can truth exist outside of fact? Can two different world views or opinions truly be held as truth at the same time? Is there a dilemma about who gets to decide? Well, apparently King David joined into this conversation 3,000 years earlier. <laughs> so there is, after all, nothing new under the sun. So King David writes in Psalm 25, verse 5, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all the day long. Our worldview is or should be that which is based upon absolute truth or truths. And they are found in God's word alone, 
as King David rightly says. And that is true for you and for me. We wait upon the Lord for our understanding. And if that's called into question, well, we seek godly counsel from those that we know. Furthermore, these truths come to us by way of the Holy Spirit. You might say his truths are indeed spirit driven. And when we say we are Team Jesus, joyfully empowering others to be Christ followers, we should remember the source and be interested first and foremost in God's truth. But also, as our guiding statement suggests, these truths in God's word are also calls for you and to me to action. (laughs) So what does this mean? Listening to a podcast on my way up to go fishing. (laughs) Truth, Pastor Joe likes to fish. The podcast from uh, a a symposium put on by Concordia Seminary St. Louis, I believe it was last fall, was entitled Living by Hope in a Secular Age, Church and Society. And it gave an example of how things happen in our lives where we take God and church simply out of the equation. For example, he was using the idea of like medical uh, issues, right? Um, Or personal problems in life and how that kind of stretches in this way. So society typically does not look to the church anymore when it comes to these significant kind of issues in life. For example, somebody might not be calling the church to get on the prayer line Well, when they're facing some type of sickness or illness, the first call after all might just be to the clinic to make sure that you get an appointment or to the specialist that is, well, that's used to dealing with these sort of things. Society typically doesn't look to the church for answers anymore, but I am not suggesting that you don't go to the doctor. So don't hear me wrong. I was just there for my annual physical this this week. <laughs> it re- well, a couple of weeks ago. It reminds me, right, to remind you men out there to get your PSA checked, your prostate numbers, so that we can keep that track of that and make sure cancer doesn't sneak up on you. Thankfully, my doctor caught that in a routine checkup. But hopefully you are getting the point of what we're trying to say here. Sometimes in my prayers for healing, I use words like this. We give you thanks for all those that work with you to bring healing to the sick, comfort to the suffering, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You see, we should always acknowledge the Lord's part in care for you and for me. Also in thanksgiving for what our medical professionals provide for us and what they do for us on a regular sort of basis. His point in that podcast that I was listening to, he did it live, but I was listening to that podcast. His point was that the church and society used to be much more connected. Advice was asked of the pastor and the church leaders. The barometer of truth was clearly connected to churches and what they believe, teach and confess, especially when it's grounded on God's word. As King David says, There we find truth. And as Jesus says, truth is being acted out by his mother, brothers, and sisters. That is, whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. God's will is our truth. Is our truth in line with God's truth? (laughs) Well, if we're really honest. (laughs) It's not really an option for us. And we also notice that we, well, we fail him on a regular basis. God's truth says that if we say we have no sin, that we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us for sure. But God's word also says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thanks be to God, right? (laughs) That that is God's truth about you and me. 
because he does not hold our sin against us. We will not face death because of our sin, because Jesus took care of that sin for us. He took care of our death on the cross, and we can be thankful for him. And Jesus also said to us, right, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And John 8 also says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. See, that's the difference in life for you and for me when we are connected to God's word and understanding his truth. This isn't just our truth. It is really the truth for everyone in the world. And this is why we take our responsibility serious about sharing our faith with others, telling others about this truth, telling people about Jesus. The sewing pillar comes to my mind for sure when it comes to these sort of things. The world won't always get it. We know that. The prevailing understanding of truth goes something along the lines of this. When a proposition aligns to the way the world actually is, the proposition is said to be true. Truth, on this view, is that correspondence relation. In other words, if I said that the Vikings won the Super Bowl last year, (laughs) what would your response be? Right, you would say that that is simply not true. But on a more serious level, and perhaps more challenging level, is where this spiritual battle gets worked out. And again, Satan pulls out all the stops when it comes to confusing the truth, God's truth. So for example, when Pilate was questioning Jesus, Jesus answered Pilate who is a good secularist for sure. You say that I am a king for this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate said to him, what is truth? See, Pilate certainly agrees with the philosophy of the world today, even though he was 2,000 years ago. But you see what I'm saying is, When he's saying what is truth, he's simply asking the good secularist point of view is, well, prove it. (laughs) Show me the statistic or show me, you know, the front page that said the Vikings won the Super Bowl. You won't find it, right? You'll find that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl for sure. So Pilate's being a good secularist, Pilate's got a pretty good understanding of what truth is. But see, Jesus has something different to say. When he says things like this, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, hopefully, Pilate grabbed on to that truth, because if he had, if he did, right, then we know that he'll be in heaven with you and with me, all of those that are trusting in this truth. But remember, it is the power of the gospel that changes lives. We simply speak the truth in love and live out that love according to God's holy will. And what does that look like? Well, we've been through this before, right? It looks differently for each and every one of us. A couple of weeks ago, I got a phone call. It happens to be that that phone call was asking for spiritual advice to a daily happening in life. And I said to myself, see, some people still think this way. Take that podcast. (laughs) Laugh out loud. (laughs) The details are not important, but safe to say, Christ's love won out and made this peace, which surpasses our human understanding. Guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts he has blessed us with and entrusted to us for his kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 
arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Here are some highlights from this week's Team Jesus News. St. Stephen will be hosting a virtual dementia seminar with Novus Life Care on June 18th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. The virtual dementia tour is a patented, groundbreaking, and evidence-based method of building a greater understanding of dementia. Each tour with a debriefing session will take approximately 30 minutes. For more information and to sign up, please see the Team Jesus News. We are looking for worship volunteers to help with services. Would you like to click slides, run sound, read, or usher? Please let the office know. Our first Second Friday Social is coming up on June 14th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Come and join us for some laid-back fellowship. If the, if the weather is nice, we'll have a cookout and bonfire. If it's not, we'll plan family-friendly party games inside. Bring a side or a dessert to share. Vacation Bible School is just around the corner on June 23rd to 27th. Don't forget to re- register your child to participate or f- to volunteer. And join the youth mission trip for VBS Movie Night on June 23rd after the VBS kickoff as they watch the movie Finding Nemo. Tickets are $15 for a parent and a child. You can scan the QR code or find the link in the Team Jesus News to buy tickets. Learn more about what's going on at St. Stephen by checking this week's Team Jesus News. At this time, we make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning in our prayers, we want to remember Angie Munt's mom that has uh, just continuing health issues that they're trying to monitor. Also prayers for Mary Atchison. She is home, so Lord willing, she gets back to church soon. Also prayers for Richard Bennett as he uh, is continuing his uh, rehab. Prayers for Linda Miller, who has uh, surgery on June 3rd and also on the 7th. So prayers for successful surgery and recovery for her. Prayers for Carolyn Parks as she has been hospitalized since May 24th with severe back pain. Prayers for Sandy. Uh, this is Shelley Curtis's aunt, as John's uh, uh, John. This is also John's wife, and she passed away from a brain aneurysm. So prayers for that family, for Sandy's family, and also John's continued uh, health issues that he's battling with with cancer. Um, prayers for um, Lisa Kutchkow's mom, who's just continuing to battle her health issues too. Prayers for Natalie. This is a college or a colleague of Carrie Snyder's that's having surgery. Also, prayers for Dominic, Shelly Curtis, a student that's uh, taking a chemo pill every day, so he is doing well, but is getting very tired. 
pulse repairs for Brian. This is a coworker of Audrey Lammers. Um, he's going to have surgery to remove some cancer. And also prayers for Sue. This is a coworker of mine. When I worked at Red Lobster in Sioux Falls, she uh, has been diagnosed with brain cancer and the outlook is not great. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yet one God. While this distinction is beyond our comprehension, we understand your unified purpose of advancing your kingdom work in the world. Empower your church, especially Team Jesus, to be obedient to following your will for our lives in the responsibilities that you have entrusted for us so that your kingdom work is done through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician of body and soul, we thank you for all who work with you to bring healing to the sick, relief to the disabled, and comfort to the suffering. Intervene for good in the lives of those among us who are hurt, sick, and in need of healing, especially those that we mentioned in our, our prayers and also the ones that we name in our hearts right now. Be the hope and strength of those mourning the death of loved ones, especially those that we named and those that have been impacted in the recent storms, and for those that we name in our hearts right now. Lord, keep us always in your saving faith, where we find comfort in the certain hope of the resurrection of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you called us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. And we celebrate with those that are celebrating their baptismal birthdays, including Julie, Jeff, Wally, Brian, Cameron, and Travis. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father, you care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. We rejoice with Corey and Liz, Pat and Sarah, Frank and Pam, Jason and Caitlin, Matt and Clarissa, Marcus and Rebecca, Mike and Carrie, as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and bind their marriages and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen.
body. Lives.